The last time I opened a school, I was still the education minister. <laughs> but regardless of what is my portfolio, it brings so much joy to see kids benefiting in the modern pedagogies of education. So it is with delight that I'm joining you this morning. A very good morning to Your Excellency, Mr. Jawa Ashraf, High Commissioner, Mr. Atu Tamanaka, Chairman, Global Indian, Indian, Global Indian International School, Mr. Kojay Meng, Chairman, Pongo North CCC, friends, teachers, students. I am truly delighted to join you this morning in the official opening of the Global Indian International School, especially on the auspicious day to day of the Chinese New Year. So, with our Chinese brothers and sisters, to Tatia Sing Yen Kwai Le, Wan Si Lu Yi, Gen Zhong Yao Da, Luko Xue Sen Men Ting Le Dong De Hua, Xue Ye Jing Bu. Well, I just wish all the students good progress in education. So I think Chinese may not be the second language here. And to my Malay brothers and sisters, Selamat Tahun Baru China. And to our Indian brothers and sisters in Tamil, Putfanda Vatika Sina. And now I venture to where no man has ventured before, at least a Chinese man, in Hindi. <laughs> Naya Sa'al Mubara. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm truly delighted to join all of you because the very thing that you bring into Pongo is the dynamism. Not just of all the things I heard my friend Atu say about the smart campus. Of course, that is an important element of education and it brings dynamism into this growing smart town of Pongo. But more importantly, when I saw the performances, whether it was the dance by the girls or the choir singing Singapore home, it brings the warmth of the heart, not just of the technologies, not just of the education of the head, but importantly, the values that your school brings into the community. So we welcome you into Pongo Town, and I'm sure we will have many, many wonderful days of coming together to enrich each other in our learning journeys, together as a school, as a community. And being a former education minister, well, when I look at your central theme of teaching, of the 21st century skill, learning skills and innovation, I must congratulate you that you are on the right track. I think every student here in GIIS will have the opportunity to utilize the wonderful facilities on your learning journey, not just in the classroom, but more importantly, the experiential learning journey that affords you in your campus and in Pongo Town. And while the smart campus will give you many, many advantages in learning about the technological uh, augmentation to education, more importantly, if I can encourage all the students and the parents to go beyond the campus and apply your learning in our little island called Singapore. The essence of learning, in my view, for the new world goes beyond the classroom. And for all our international friends, you have the distinct advantage of being in a cosmopolitan city that is thriving in the heart of ASEAN. A growth region, a potential growth engine in the next 10, 20, 30 years. After all, ASEAN has a population of 630 million or so. Slightly less than India, slightly less than China, but nevertheless, 
more than half a billion, where you can use Singapore and the things you learn in Singapore in the classroom and outside of classroom to make the best advantages that you can have with education here in Singapore. Go out of the school campus. Go into Singapore society and see for yourself, feel for yourselves what makes Singapore this unique island of success in the last 50 years. And for my fellow citizens, do likewise. No matter whether you are 40, 50, 60, let's continue on this learning journey together with our younger friends, mostly from India. Why do I say this? If you look at the key ingredients of Singapore's success, as my friend, the High Commissioner, have said, there is detailed planning, yet with a vision for the future. As the fourth generation leaders, we will continue on this planning to make sure that Singapore has a strong, robust economy, strong security, yet weaved in together as a society to have the social compact that ensures that when Singapore succeeds, every Singaporean shares in the success. These three elements will drive a successful vision ahead for Singapore. Why? Because then, the institutions will be directed with a guidance to ensure that whether it is the economic agencies, their planning will ensure that Singapore, with the opportunities afforded to us by the technological disruptions, will be able to overcome challenges, seize opportunities, and ensure that the macro economy can grow and afford the resources for Singapore to pursue our own interests and the interests of our citizens. This institution we have in the MAS, we have in the MTI. Equally important, this institution that brings security, called the SAF, called the Home Team, will be needed likewise to ensure that from the home base of Singapore, we have a safe and, so safe and secure society where our young can roam the streets of Pongo at 3 a.m without having fear for our personal security. And with a strong SAF, always ensuring that our national security and our sovereignty will be protected, come what may. With this strong economy and the ability to fend for ourselves, we can create the society we want as Singaporeans. Ensuring that in every of our success, we leave no Singaporean behind. Continuing our vision of a social compact that regardless of race, language or religion, we will build a Singapore that embraces each Singaporean. So if you look at this important aspect of strong institutions, whether it is in the civil service or whether it is in the economy, we have, we have companies, this will create, these strong institutions will create the overall environment that will continue to create a strong in, and conducive investment climate to bring investments, to bring friends into Singapore, augmenting all aspects of our endeavours, whether it is the economy or in the area of security. A strong SAF is needed, and my retired colleague from the Indian Army just now, was just recounting to me that he served in the northern parts of India, where I went as well, where our Singapore Army deploys to India to conduct joint exercises, where our Air Force deploys to Kalakunda for joint exercises, where our Navy, I'm told, will continue to exercise in June in the Adaman Seas to promote mutual defence interests to augment the overall security of Singapore. So, in strong institutions, critical. With the strong institutions, we provide the investment climates for a strong economy. And importantly, a school like GIIS, and together with MOE, where we continue on these new pedagogies for the future, we will drive the innovation index of Singapore up further. You know, Singaporeans of my age, 
are not known to be very creative. But in our little Singapore, actually, each generation of Singaporean, and each generation meaning 10 years or so, 40 years old, 30 years old, and coming to 20 years old, each 10 years of new badges of Singaporean are more innovative, more entrepreneurial, and more creative than the previous one. And if we put on the lenses of commitment to education in the drive towards a smart nation, I'm confident that with the younger ones, together with the experience of the older ones, we can seize the opportunities that avails to Singapore and Singaporeans, given the technological disruptions. Critical. So, let me congratulate G. IIS, not just for your smart campus, but also in the many initiatives that you involve yourselves in the community. Because, after all, no matter how smart, how intelligent a person is, ultimately, in my view, the values that drive us to do things are the most important. So I welcome all the students that are living in our community, come participate in our grassroots, come join our different activities and know also firsthand how a country like ours where we have a majority of Chinese, a minority of Malays, Indians and Eurasians have come together over 50 plus years to forge an unlikely nation. As a state, yes, by a legal definition, we have become Singapore in 1965. But to forge a nation where Indian no longer just thinks of being an Indian Singaporean, but now a Singaporean Indian or a Chinese like me, where my father thinks of himself as a Chinese Singaporean to a generation like mine, where we think of being Singaporean Chinese, means that we are on the journey of forging national identity and a sense of together togetherness as Singaporeans first. While, of course, treasuring our heritage, whether it is to the archipelago, uh, neighbouring countries, to India, to China, to faraway lands. Singapore is unique. And may your smart campus bring you to new heights of learning in the classroom, and may you use Singapore, treasure what you have here, and know the system. And in time to come, when you succeed in your young lives, as entrepreneurs, as scientists, as teachers, whatever, wherever you may be, have that place in your heart to know that Singapore is a friend of yours personally and that Singapore treasures our relationships with India and we hope to always come together in partnership to create mutual win-wins for both our countries, for our citizens and to all of you. Thank you very much and congratulations on your official opening.